let's define awareness as a glowing ball of light. So imagine an orb, a glowing ball of light that can float around. Let's call that awareness and put that aside. Now let's define the mind. Let's define the mind as a vast space with many different areas within it. One area of the mind is angry, hatred, jealousy, joy, happiness, sex, food, art, science, technology. And by using your willpower and your powers of concentration, you can actually take your awareness, this ball of light, to any area of the mind that you want to go to. And here's the most important part. Where your awareness goes, that's where your energy is flowing. So if your awareness goes to the angry area of the mind, your energy is flowing there, it's actually strengthening that particular area of the mind. So this is the theory of it. If I took a watering can and I watered a garden bed, would the weeds grow or the flowers grow? Both, right? Water has no ability to discriminate between the weeds and the flowers. Whatever I water starts to grow. Energy is the same way as well. If I took energy and I invested it into something negative, it will grow and become more negative. And if I took energy, invested it into something positive, it will grow and become more positive. Energy has no ability to discriminate between what's positive and what's negative. Whatever you invest energy into starts to grow and manifest in your life. Let's define what concentration is. I define concentration as the ability to keep your awareness on one thing for an extended period of time. So if I can keep my awareness on this lady and hold it on her, I'm concentrating. If I allow my awareness, my ball of light to move away, I'm getting distracted. I use my willpower and I bring my awareness back and I hold it on her. Being able to do that allows me to concentrate. Most people can't concentrate for two reasons, right? One is they've never been taught how to concentrate. Second is they never practice concentration. How many of you growing up here in school had classes on concentration every single day that you, the same way you had classes on geography, on math, on science? Anybody? I travel all around the world and I ask this question and nobody puts their hand up. How many of you, when you were growing up in school, were told to concentrate? Isn't that amazing? You get told to concentrate, but you never get taught how to do it. Right? When I was growing up, I got told to concentrate all the time. Dandapani, concentrate on doing your homework. Dandapani, concentrate on eating your food. Anybody want to show me how to do it? No. How many of you have kids? How many of you tell your kids to concentrate? Have you ever showed them how to? No, right? And then if you don't show them how to concentrate, how would they know how to do it? And then if you want to be good at something, you have to practice it. If you want to be really good at concentration, you need to practice it all day. People are good at distraction because that's what they practice all day long. It's not that they don't have the ability to concentrate. They've just practiced distraction and become really, really good at it. So how do we concentrate? We concentrate by practicing doing one thing at a time and integrating this practice into our everyday life. So for me, I look at my average day and I ask myself, what's a reoccurring event in my life? Every day I speak with my spouse. Every time I speak with my spouse, I give her my undivided attention. I keep my awareness on her. It drifts away, I bring it back. It drifts away, I bring it back. I keep my awareness on her, I give her my undivided attention. Now every day I also speak to my clients. I speak with my clients, I speak with my friends, family. Every time I speak with somebody, I give them my undivided attention. If I'm on the phone, I give the person on the phone my undivided attention. I practice doing one thing at a time. By the end of the day, I've clocked about maybe six to eight hours of practicing concentration. Six months later, I become really good at concentration. Twelve months later, I become really good at concentration. The best way to become good at something is to take a tool and insert it into a reoccurring event in your life. And this is the best way to become good at something rather than to create another practice in your life. Just take a tool and insert it into the practice, into a reoccurring event in your life. The other thing we need to learn to develop is our willpower, right? Everybody is born with various levels of willpower, but one thing we never get taught to do is to actually develop willpower. And willpower is like a muscle. I call it a mental biceps. If I could draw biceps around my mind, that would be my willpower. There are three ways to develop willpower. One, finish what you begin. Two, finish it well beyond your expectations. Three, do a little bit more than you think you're able to do. All of these three ways require effort, and that effort is willpower. Right? So how do I develop willpower? I take these three methods and 
I apply it to things that reoccur in my life. What's something that reoccurs in my life every day? Every day I sleep. What a great opportunity to develop willpower. Before I go to sleep, I floss, I brush my teeth, put on my pajamas, I go to sleep. When I wake up in the morning, I finish the process of sleep. How do I finish the process of sleep? I make the bed every day. So every day I wake up in the morning, I make the bed. What's something else that I do every day? Every day I have breakfast. If I have time to make breakfast, I have time to eat breakfast, then I have time to do the breakfast dish and put it away, right? So I finish the process that I begin, and I bring this into everything that I do. Then throughout the day, I develop willpower. The more I practice this, the better I get. Now I have tremendous amount of willpower after six months. I've developed a lot of willpower. Every time my awareness drifts away, I use that mental muscle, that willpower, to bring my awareness back. Then I use the powers of concentration that I've developed to hold my awareness on what I'm focused on. And because I'm focusing on that, where my awareness goes, energy flows. And my, now my energy is flowing towards what I want. And that starts to manifest in my life. That's why it's so important, firstly, to understand there's a separation between awareness and the mind, two completely different things. You control where your awareness goes, you control where your energy is flowing, and you control what's manifesting in your life. And you use your powers of concentration and your willpower to hold your awareness on the priorities in your life. The next thing we want to do is to learn to manage energy in our life, right? This is based on the premise that we only have so much energy each day. We have a finite amount of energy each day. Each day we have this much energy. We take our energy and we invest it into people and things around us. We keep investing, investing, investing until we have no more energy left. We get exhausted. That's usually around 11 or 11.30 or midnight. We go to sleep. Our energy builds up again. We go out the next day and we invest our energy into people and things until we have no more energy. But, but the one thing most people don't do is we never evaluate who and what we're investing our energy in. So I always tell people to treat energy the same way you treat money. It's a finite resource that needs to be wisely managed, wisely reallocated, and wisely invested. No matter how rich you are, you only have so much money, right? And before you spend money, most of us think and evaluate what we're investing our money in. If somebody asks us for $5,000 or $30,000 to invest into a startup or a company, we would ask questions. We just wouldn't hand them $30,000. We would ask, what's your plan with it? What are you going to do with this money? What's my return on my investment? Because it's a finite resource. So why don't we do the same thing with energy? Before we invest energy into someone or something, why don't we evaluate if that person or that thing is deserving of our energy? Because if you only have this much energy, and if I took 10% of my energy and I gave it to John, that's 10% I could have given to my spouse, my business, the things and people that I love. Remember the law of thermodynamics. Energy cannot be created or destroyed, but it can be transferred or transformed from one thing to another, right? So I can't create energy. If I give 10% to John, I want to know he's going to do something good with it. Because if he's just going to squander it, I'd rather take it and give it to the people and things that I love. So why is it important to manage energy? For me, the greatest impetus for managing energy is, is death. Death is the greatest impetus for me to manage energy. I realize that life is finite, that I only have one life as me. And regardless of my beliefs, I know I have one existence and as Dandapani. And what happens after death? I'm not quite sure. We all have different upbringings, different religious beliefs. Some people say when you die, you go to heaven or hell. Some people say when you die, it's game over. That's it. Nothing happens afterwards. Some people say when you die, you get reincarnated as a man or woman. And others say you get reincarnated as a man, woman, maybe an insect or an animal. But no one really knows. We have our beliefs and we hold strongly to them. But no one's ever died, gone to heaven, taken a selfie, come back, posted it on Instagram, and said, look at me here in heaven, hashtag pearly gates, right? <laughs> so we don't quite know, but the one definitive thing is that we know we're going to die. And I know I have a finite amount of life. I don't believe life is short, but I do believe it's finite. And because I, my life is finite, I want to be extremely clear where to focus my energy. There's no point learning to concentrate if you don't know what to concentrate on. So along with learning concentration, it's really important to also learn what to focus on. One way to do this is to spend five minutes each morning reflecting on what your purpose of life is. Get to know yourself. Most people are happy to spend time with other people and things, but very few people actually make time to spend time with themselves. So when you wake up in the morning, take a shower, go to a quiet place in your house, sit down, and ask yourself, 
questions about you. What do you want in life? What's my purpose in life? Why am I here? What do I love? What am I passionate about? How many people can generally answer, this is my, say, this is my purpose in life? Very, very few people. Once you're clear with your purpose, you know what to concentrate on, and you know what to direct your finite amount of energy towards.